Okay, quick unboxing video here. This is something that uh, I've been curious about for quite some time now, and I finally got around to ordering a set. Let's see what they are. A few things here, but this is the one that talking about here, or the item that I'm talking about, it's the Shuttle Art 88, okay, and what these are, are 88 alcohol pens here, permanent style, I've been using the La Plume permanents um, that were given to me by someone that knows people at the Marvy factory, but anyways, I've been curious about these. Now, these are 88 different colors here, and the one thing that I, uh, why I got such a large set is because um, the ones that I'm really kind of interested in um, in this set are more of the pastel colors, the lighter tones, uh, you know, like the I don't know, it would probably be like a 15 to 25 percent value of given hue, so I'm kind of interested in these kind of lighter tones in here. Maybe the grayscale ones as well. There's warm grays and cool grays. Um, well, let's see what these are, okay? Now these are double-sided. Let's grab a couple of these out of here. Um, let's see, the barrels are kind of in this triangular um, format. They're comfortable to the hand. Now, these ones don't have a brush tip, but they come with a kind of more of that uh, little, um, I don't know what they call it. It's a fine tip, but it's kind of more of a bullet tip. And the other side is the chisel tip, you know. Um, for coverage, I would find myself working with the uh, that bullet tip, the fine tip, more often than the chisel tip. I probably won't be using the chisel tip hardly at all, but let's take a look at some of these. Let's take a look at the color coding in relation to the uh, the caps here, and that looks pretty true to the uh, color. Maybe this one is a little bit darker than the uh, the cap there. That was the pastel blue. Here's a blue gray. That's a really nice color. Very light in value. That's really light in the value. This one might be. This one is lighter than the uh, the cap there, but I don't know. That's that's not really a problem for me. I don't need things to be, you know, like Pantone, you know, or something like that, accurate or something of that sort. Let's take a look at this warm gray here. This one is really light in value. And I guess these ones do have a, um, a numeric code, WGO.5. Hmm. This one is quite a bit different in hue than the cap. I guess it is more true to kind of a warm gray tone than this cap. This one cap here looks like a neutral gray, but when I hear the word, you know, the term warm gray, it seems like it would make sense to me that that would be more of the color. So, you know, I'm sure they try to get as close to the uh, the hue as possible, but these are really cheap. So let's get into the price here. This set is a set of 88 pens and it cost $40, um, less than 50 cents uh, per pen. So I don't know, you can't beat that. That's why I don't get too uh, nitpicky about, you know, the colors in relation to the, um, you know, the, uh, I don't know what you would call it, indexing or whatever, tone. Pretty good. These are pretty well scentless, so that is good. I used to have some other types of alcohol pens that um, were quite uh, fragrant. This is a blue-gray. All right, now I like the colors in terms of the, uh, the tones in relation to their titles. That's 
It looks like a blue gray to me. Could be called steel gray or something like that. Now, these pens are really kind of tar their target audience is the um, the adult coloring book market. Okay, so you know there's various values and intensities for all the different hues, um, but where I use it, I'm just using the lighter tones as embellishments for my stamped scenes and these scenes right here are just stamped in dye-based inks, okay? Uh, Water-based uh, pens. And let's just take a look at some of this. Now, normally I would lay down some um, dye-based inks over the top of this and I would use these pens for my shadow areas, but let's just take a look and see how they look just in general. Okay, this is my warm gray. Okay. Now, this is why I like it. I, I usually like working kind of uh, from light tones and I work a little bit darker incrementally. Okay. So on something like this, I would be hitting kind of, oh, I would be getting a pretty decent amount of coverage because of the value of this pen being very light. Okay, but for the most part, I will be hitting my shadow areas, my darker areas, with um, kind of the medium tone um, pen values. Okay, going in here again. This is the warm gray. Hitting some of my rocks. Okay, now this is the beauty of uh, alcohol pens. Okay, now this is the uh, warm gray point. Five, oh, let's see, here's a warm gray two. Will I take the time to put these in order? Probably not, but um, all right, so this is what I like about it. Here's warm grays right here, and it's kind of moving up in value. I won't take the time to find all of them here, but it looks like there's a numeric um, kind of coding for all of these, but see this, this is what's really nice about any type of Kind of larger set as you can move through these uh, values just very incrementally. So let's try this warm gray. Now I use the chisel tip for coverage. Let's play around with some of the uh, bullet tip, you know, for the kind of more specific areas, like say shadows or something like this. I want to make these rocks seem a little bit more dimensional. And stamps gave stamps. There's a lot of detail in them, so there's a lot of um, um, shadows and you can just kind of follow the design where there's more you know shadow areas inherent in the design itself I'm just going in there and reiterating it with um, value and color I guess and I'm trying to make these rocks seem a little bit more opaque you know they're not as see-through now by putting some tone into them and they seem more dimensional as a result. You see that I used less of the um, uh, the darker warm gray than the lighter one, even though this one was still fairly light in value. Let's move up. Let's see, these caps don't designate. You can put the cap on either side, so one's not for the chisel, you know, and one isn't just for the bullet tip, which is good, I guess. I don't know. Saves money. Now, with the, this bullet tip is not what a lot of pen vehicles are using. They use more of that brush marker. So I do like the brush marker um, tip. Yeah, more than this, I don't know. You know, if I was only using this, I would be absolutely fine with it. Okay, hitting the shadows again. Maybe leaving some of the. Um, other tones as is the previous two colors. Okay, so hit that. That was the number two. There's probably a, a warm gray number three in here somewhere. Do I want to bother looking for it? Maybe not. Let's just go to the four. Okay. And it just gets a little bit darker, very incrementally. This as I start moving up into these uh, 
darker values of warm gray. It looks like it's getting more brownish in hue. Okay. And let's go to the number five. Just kind of in the deepest areas right in here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm starting to notice my um, my mark. You know, there's a more kind of definitive line that's being created by this darker tone, okay? Because I'm using it in more specific areas in the shadows, but I want to blend that out. By the way, I'm working on glossy cardstock here. Let's go back to the number two again, or the number one. And uh, let's take that. And by going back into that darker tone and moving it around a little bit, it should kind of put it back into solution, which it's doing. And it's allowing me to blend it out. Now, there might be a blender pen in here. I'm not quite sure. I, I don't see it if there is one, but the blender pens are usually ones that just have the binder in it with no pigment and, uh, you know, alcohol pens when you go over them. A lot of times they go back into solution depending on what surface you're working on. If you're working on uh, matte paper, maybe not so much. Maybe you're a little bit more stuck with that uh, mark that you lay down. Maybe not, but um, I don't know. This is going to react differently depending on your surface again. So on glossy paper, that ink is kind of sitting on the surface, so it's allowing me to go back into it and to put that color again back into solution. So it's kind of allowing me to blend it out in kind of that typical alcohol ink style, you know, where you can kind of see that little uh, ridge of ink buildup, you know, which gives it, you know, kind of a little bit of texture and gives it that uh, kind of more uh, alcohol ink kind of a styling to it. So, anyways, I didn't do that top part. I'm just going to work on this bottom portion. As this isn't a coloring video, but more of an unboxing. But I do want to test these out and test out the uh, kind of the distance between um, one value and the next one. Now, those warm grays have a pretty wide. Um, kind of a wide uh, value scale, I guess. You know, when I look at something like pale green here, you know, I'm looking at these different greens in here. Let's say I wanted to put on something like a, um, a little bit of moss onto these rocks in here. Okay, get, just to get a little, little bit of hue. I'm seeing if there's something kind of really pale. I'm not seeing it. Well, let's try the pale green. Now, I wish this one was a little bit lighter. I wish there was more of like a 10% um, green, but this one will have to do. Let's put a little bit of tone on some of these rocks to create a little bit of a uh, kind of a mossy, um, maybe a lichen type of surface on here just to give it a little bit of color. Now that is too bright for me and dark. So let's go in and kind of mix that around a little bit. This is a uh, brown gray. Looks more like a ochre to me. So I don't know about that color name, but again, these pens are less than 50 cents each. So, you know, I'll live with it um, with no problem. Okay, let's go back to that warm gray again. I can see that I'll be using my lighter tones a lot as my blender pens, okay? I'm using these, but but again, I usually don't do my entire coloring with pens, you know, but just to uh, show that it can. Okay, that was a warm gray. Let's try the cool gray in here, okay? Now, I don't know if it's going to do a whole lot. This is a very, very light hue, which is fantastic. I really like those light ones again. It wouldn't be a lot of people's first choices, you know, and 
so that, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I bought this larger set, because the larger sets often, they start off with a, you know, a basic set, and they're usually brighter tones, you know, things that are going to be more visible, but, you know what I mean, this is not going to be your typical, real popular color, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, adult coloring books or something like that, so sometimes you have to buy the larger sets to get those lighter, you know, tones, lighter values, not in all of them. And speaking of that, I believe that I'm guessing that there's one company making, I don't know, all of these kind of inexpensive styles of um, sets out there because the barrels kind of look real similar to me, you know, when looking at it online, but the, the, um, the brands are all kind of just stamped on, you know, real similar vehicles. So, and like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if there's one manufacturer for, you know, or supplier or manufacturer making it for all of these different brands out there. So anyways, here's a little bit of a, you know, um, example of some different tones down here that is predominantly the warm grays again with a little bit of that mossy tone up there. I don't know. Let's see. Um, here, let me try this cool gray in here. That's a lot of warm grays. Let's see if I add a little of this cool gray here in there. Okay, that looks okay to me. Looks pretty good. As far as the quality of ink goes, I don't know, you know, uh, the way that I use it, this seems absolutely fine to me. Um, as far as uh, hues and consistency and whatnot. Um, but again, 50 cents, 88 pens, $40. I don't know. 88 pens, to me, that's a little bit better than $40 for eight pens or something like that. You know what I mean? Eight pens or something like that. So um, for my use, that's pretty good. Um, and I see myself using these all the time. So. Um, so far, so good. We'll see how long they last. I suspect they'll last just fine. How much ink is inside these barrels? I suspect that barrel is, you know, pretty full from end to end. It's your typical size pen here. I thought they might be a little bit shorter, you know, due to the, uh, the price point, but it looks the same to me. So unless there's like some kind of like little tiny reservoir of like that big for this tip and this you know, for this one, but I'm guessing this thing is hollow on the inside and just has that, you know, that um, ink or alcohol um, reservoir in there of some kind of pad that's been added to it. I doubt if that whole thing is filled up, but I don't know, not too bad. And this case is pretty good right here. You know, it's uh, not great, but not bad either. So Shuttle Art 88 pack art markers. Prices probably fluctuate, but again, I got it for 40. So fun stuff. A lot of inking ahead, and they will supplement my Le Plume permanents.